Woo! Hi, hi, it's so, uh, quite jolly to be here. Uh, I haven't been on any stage for quite a while, so uh, I try to dress up well. So, um, I'm no startup guy, I'm a, I'm a 5G guy, trying to sell 5G. Uh, so here in the picture you can see one of the attempts. We were trying to persuade people that uh, 5G is not as horrible. There's a beehive and there in the background, you, you can see the 5G station radiant, radiating right uh, to the beehive, and as a result, we proved that the honey turns out really good on the right on the rooftop of our technical building. So, but of course, the uh, horrors of 5G is not the essential problem we are facing right now. The the fundamental issue is that uh, consumers, my customers, they're not expecting too much of 5G. They need more speed, more broadband, uh, and they normally do not expect any of the stuff uh, normally been discussed in a events like TechChill. Uh, so for the last year, so uh, one of the challenges and ideas that we are looking for is how to make demand more innovative and in essence how to support uh, market demand becoming more innovative and also how to be a decent member of innovative ecosystems. And I think this is a relevant uh, topic for many of us, particularly those in Europe, because these days it's quite uh, a usual practice to shout about things happening in China, shout about things happening in Europe, and there's always this challenge, can, can we as Europeans do something about it? So, of course, I do not know the answer. I, could, I will today share some of the um, uh, nice and inspirational things I've stumbled upon over the last years when, while thinking about this. So, first of all, when you think about ecosystems, there is this ambition of ecosystems, which, of course, comes from some real science. Uh, from natural sciences, from biology. And first things, when you look at the e ecosystems, you always notice incredible complexity of how do they look, starting from the sun and, and water cycles and, and carbon cycles and myriads of uh, different sorts of networks which links all these actors, like some friendships between mushrooms and trees and, uh, and, and, and links of different tiers of predators, each in each other and keeping uh, ecosystems in balance, we see sex and recombination of DNA as a fundamental driver of evolution and creativity in ecosystems. And, and of course, the fundamental outcome and, and the big factor is as a biodiversity. So the ecosystems that are not diverse are most probably not sustainable and not ready to adapt to the change. But overall, the one big uh, observation you, you can place here is that it's the change which is happening all the time in natural ecosystems. It's incremental, and it, um, there's a very good question. Uh, therefore, where would you place yourself if you would keep on with this uh, uh, this analogy to the innovation ecosystems in business? Who would you be if do venture capitalists feel like uh, like sun <laughs> that give the energy and money to 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 the ecosystem or or probably as fungi, I don't know. But inc incremental is one um, thing that links natural ecosystems to uh, innovation. I, my uh, right-wing friend, uh, that's why this uh, book is on, on, on the right side of the slide, he presented me with a beautiful recent book of Mr. Matt Ridley, who is uh, going very ambitiously all over through the whole history of innovation of re recent centuries, and one of the things he is coming back again and again is that innovation is not sudden. There is normally no revolution and there is e e incremental evolution of, of things happening and, and, and starting from light, light bulbs and steam engines, there's always many inventors, normally even at the same time, building on, on the work of uh, previous generations and, and, and th therefore um, one hope um, that um, Mr. Ridley gives in his book, and I would really suggest you read it, is, is actually that there is a place for everyone in, in this big picture, that our, our fetish of naming a single person, single super genius, super god, who is responsible for, for, for all innovation is, is, is flawed, because this is not what is actually happening in, in e innovation ecosystems, and I would really suggest you all to take um, an example from famous beaver looking at the Hoover Dam and saying that uh, he didn't build it, but it was built on his design. 
Then there's the other book, which gave me some great inspiration by, or actually many books, few books by Miss Matsukato. It's, I placed this book on the left side <laughs> of my slide because it, it's, it's, it's much, much, much more left-leaning. And this, on the other hand, is the, is the book who not so much talks about the happenings of individuals in the course of innovation. It more talks about the, gives some hope to the governments and actually is trying to revive the idea that uh, government also has some role in, in innovation process and gives some really, really, it's probably the most notorious example of Ms. Matsukato's work is she brought about 130 something different patents uh, that, 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 that were needed or are enabling the appearance of uh, iPhone. So she's in no way neglecting the importance of job of Mr. Steve Jobs, but, but um, she actually names all the, start, starting from touch screens and internet and many other things, all these patents came about because of the government risk and the government long-term investment in research and therefore she is somewhat very quite popular in the circles of OECD kind of people uh, that, that and is promoting the idea that governments should actually come back and do some mission style approach and invest money and, and, and place some big targets. Uh, Mr. Ridley actually spends a whole chapter on criticizing Ms. Matsukato work. Uh, he is not quite a big fan of, of, um, of government in intervention and intrusion, and I don't know what to do with myself because I like uh, both those books and I, I found some peace in this quite cheesy idea that probably normally in nature two big truths are normally uh, uh, they are against each other and they still are both true at the very same time and I, I believe that in the in innovations ecosystem there's, there is a place for, for everybody, there is a, a place for government preferably the government who is not trying to tinker with the, with the innovation itself, but probably is supporting and, and investing and being a patron of, of all the things that could enable innovation. And there's place for you as well, because innovation never happens by a single person. It's more, more of a group work. So looking further for some inspirational things, before I go down a little bit deeper into our, our practical experience, is of course uh, a little bit in history, there is one innovation ecosystem that stands out uh, during the, the, the uh, human history. That's, of course, is of uh, Florence, a time of enlightenment. And uh, so far, probably many historians would, would agree that, that even the Silicon Valley <laughs> is, is, is yet to match all the fundamental and grandiose achievements that were actually uh, uh, achieved during the uh, time of enlightenment in Florence. And, and it's quite easy to use that same model. You can see that actually it wasn't just some strange uh, post-medieval city. Uh, all the components of a uh, successful innovation ecosystem was in place already during the uh, uh, enlightenment times. So first of all, there was a big uh, shift in society because of the Black Plague and it has reshuffled uh, structures of society and, and made place for new markets, so disaster that is creating uh, huge opportunities. There were kind of uh, financial, semi-financial, semi-government style uh, at those days. The Medici family, who was actually actively seeking for talent and actively f financing the talent, that was actually happening. There was the uh, quite willingness to ac actually support uh, talent. The decoration of Sixth Chapel was given out to Michelangelo, who had no previous experience of doing this just because they, it seemed that he has lots of talent. Mr. Super Duper Leonardo da Vinci was, is quite famous for spending many, many, many years in the mentorship of some older um, master and culture of mentorship was present during the Florence. These two guys, Da Vinci and Michelangelo, hated each other very much and fierce competition went on and was supported by society. And ultimately, the most strangest fact I actually did knew uh, that they were changing the management team of, uh, of what was responsible for decoration and building of, of uh, Florence Duomo every three months and actually actively seeking for new ideas. And all these, this all creates this, this um, innovation culture and the, and the results are global. And of course, the Silicon Valley, we can't not mention it. And, and I think this, is, this, this discussion of Silicon Valley is really relevant to Europe these days because um, 
probably at the heart of Silicon Valley is very strong uh, university and ac academical system. Uh, if you take a look at, and, at all the startups and su successful IPOs that has been brought to us from, from Stanford University, you need to question why, why, why this happened. And, and, um, and then again, there is a set of uh, factors and probably most fascinating to me as European is, is this very aggressive um, stance of Stanford University towards bringing the students out into the startups, into securing pro professors' uh, workplace uh, or employment if he goes out and finds, finds, uh, sets up a, a startup and, and fails, he can safely come back. So there's a whole system that is uh, trying to support that the ideas from your university go out as, as fast as possible. Uh, possible and possibly fail. The most funny fact about the Stanford that they knew actually that still up to, the, to, to this day, the largest chunk of the research money is still coming from the government, which is an interesting notion about the, because normally in the United States, they like to claim about the land of the free and, 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 and not such a strong federal government until the fact that you realize that also the, even the, the holy uh, Elon Musk is, is, is been a, uh, a big receiver of government subsidies to actually support the development of, of his technology. So, so everybody is trying to do their part. So let's talk about something really uh, uh, hard for me as a guy from Riga. Let's talk about uh, Tallinn, because of course we are, we are neighbors and we always are looking over the uh, fence and, and being a little bit envious about things happening on both sides <laughs> of our border. So Tallinn is probably a be be beautiful example of, um, of a specific breed, of a specific species that evolved in Estonia ecosystem. They have this name of Skype Muffy, and that's, uh, that's a beautiful example of how people or employees from a single successful or few single successful teams that have seen success are going out into the market and creating next year of companies, next year of success, and these again go out and again, and now this beautiful um, <laughs> tree of life is uh, growing, and, and, and that's an also an interesting a, a, a example how innovation ecosystem works. I don't know actually, is this an ecosystem yet in Estonia? I hope that and I hear that also the universities are trying, are catching up, but uh, probably the startups on their own, I don't know, will, they, will that be enough for, 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 for Estonia? But I, I'm, I'm really happy for their success. Then there is our, our dear southern na neighbor from Lithuania and Vilnius. They probably don't have such a beautiful startup tree of life as Estonians do, but um, uh, recently, they have made a very big move, a very conscious move from the state-owned enterprise uh, perspective and trying to be a part of innovation ecosystem from not a startup perspective, but a huge uh, rich company perspective like Ignitis, which is a public utility for electricity in Lithuania. They have set aside particular enormous fund for cooperation with startups in the Baltic uh, region, particularly for innovation in uh, energy. And I, I, I really adore that, that approach. Then uh, Riga and, and, and our own experience in the country. And uh, we are probably somewhat alike Lithuania in that matter because there is a raging ongoing discussion right now in the government about that, so speaking, our ecosystem, innovation ecosystem in, in, in Latvia, we are lacking, um, so to speak, uh, big species. There are, so there are no elephants and, <laughs> and, and no whales in innovation ecosystem. And that's a problem for it because we need one. Because what we have noticed that it's that, that some sort of or insufficient amount of innovation is not so much a problem of, of government, which is actually trying to do their part. It's more a problem of companies. The companies in Latvia are, are, are the ones who are not investing enough in research and development, and particularly the big ones. And in Europe, on average, the roughly three quarters of investment in R&D is coming from very large companies. And this is a problem uh, we are trying to tackle now, because if, if things do not happen by their own, like there are no spurge of new startups, so the government might try to be involved and, and do some terraforming. And additional problem is very interesting, uh, particularly on the digital side, because uh, the 
the scarcity of IT personnel is is uh, in our ecosystem, the innovation ecosystem is is hardened by the fact that uh, there is a lot of external, <laughs> I would call them external predators in the analogy of ecosystems that are eating out uh, all the available free uh, brain. And in Latvia, as we speak, we have the highest salaries for IT personnel, which is of course not very, which is great for for the for the employees, not not so great for the for the. Uh, um, innovation ecosystem as such, so therefore uh, Latvian government is trying to attempt kind of a conscious terraforming, I might call, so actually identifying the, the strong areas of our ecosystem and actually trying to patronage those and support, not to meddle with those, but support those. And quite recently, um, also quite happy to uh, read is the, about the initiative of the government is again to do some conscious uh, terraforming attempt uh, in ecosystem and and starting from very very basic uh, basic building blocks is to spend out uh, some effort to bring a computer to every kid in the country either in cooperation with Google or Microsoft which is I think well, I, I hope that in the long term or medium term we, we, we that this will prove as a right right move exactly from the actor like the government, how can you fundamentally in influence the innovation system in the country. So let's talk about uh, our practical experience. So LMT is a big company in, in Latvia, so we, we are conscious we would like to be a decent member of, of innovation ecosystem here. So we were thinking, uh, what's our role? What could we what could we do? And as I mentioned in the very beginning, the, uh, we have also a commercial problem. So it's, no pro it's, it's not so hard to build a 5G network. It's not, not so hard to sell it as a basic broadband. But if you go to any telco event, you would hear about things like massive, uh, uh, massive uh, communication, low latency, ultra low latency services, and all the magic that might be brought to you by 5G. But of course, the customers haven't seen that, and they don't ask you for all this uh, beauty. So therefore, we approach the um, uh, Again, an interesting new practice uh, defined by Professor uh, Saraswati recently. It's called F F F effectuation, which is technically based on, on quite a natural <laughs> uh, biological thing, is, is trying to understand your resources and re re rematch and recombine them in the network of your partners. And we have consciously invested our effort to build many testbeds um, uh, in, in Latvia and in and in Riga, actually, to meet with different kind of actors and and fast and the exchange of <laughs> technically to have more uh, sex of the ideas in in Riga. So we have friends, and and we we have launched the first um, 5G military test base that happened in Adagi, in the next to Riga. We uh, together with Riga City Council, we have made a test bed for for. Uh, Smart city uh, in the in the digital heart of Riga. We have built a 5G laboratorium together with the big, biggest regional manufacturer of radio electronic equipment, and actually produced some some beautiful 5G equipment, which is not done in China. It's actually done in Europe, and therefore being quite famous these days. We are set, set, setting up a cross-border autonomous vehicle testbed uh, together with some EU research. Uh, uh, EU research partners, we are cooperating with, with universities and we have built 5G testbeds in both of our biggest uh, universities and laboratoriums. We have launched the uh, uh, drone testbed because we do believe that mobile communications will be essential into managing beyond visual line of sight flight in the f uh, future. We uh, opened up and entered uh, the cooperation with uh, many EU research and actually found new friends. So trying to net network also on European scale and actually that's a pretty new experience for, for us, but it actually has proved very, very, very rational and useful. And ultimately, uh, even the things like textual and meeting in Hackathon is a again that same pattern is trying to reach out and network and, and, and look for resources and look for friendships outside and this does pay off and all this knowledge of networking and, and finding new friends helps you deliver strange new products unimaginable uh, for a telco operator before like uh, these days we are involved in uh, bringing together Latvian local in 
industry in actually building up capacity for deploying offensive drones for the for the defense industry of uh, Latvia or actually uh, we quite we were first on the planet to deliver a decent contact tracing app for the customers thanks to the cooperation of whole innovation and an IT ecosystem in uh, Latvia so wrapping this all up a final few words is probably coming back to the natural ecosystems. I think the ultimate target, the ultimate target of all the innovations these days in the long term should be is uh, saving our species from dying out. Because dying out is something that uh, species do in eco e ecosystems and our way of um, treating the climate probably is one straight way how to go out of this window. And, uh, of course, uh, we can save, we, we, we can use less plastic and do all these other uh, things, but in, in essence, the, the biggest benefits that are to be brought about are to be brought about innovation, starting from agriculture down to uh, energy. And therefore, um, I would like to hope that we will not be between those 99% of the species that has uh, died out until this uh, moment. Probably we will cling on to this 1% for uh, quite a while because so as Mr. Late George Carlin said, uh, planet's fine, uh, we have some problems. So good luck to you all, all and uh, let's, uh, let's be friends and let's network. Thank you.